Welcome back to Daytime. You can find us at rogerstv.com. You can also find this amazing recipe for delicious citrus almond meringues. Our thanks to uh, Elise Cop smith from uh, Fanshawe Foodie for uh, Foodie. making us that hearty soup and those amazing meringues. How cute was she? That's great. She's great. I want to have her back so I can have cupcakes so you can for breakfast. More meringue. <laughs> oh, cupcakes. She wants to make you cupcakes. Cupcakes for breakfast. Yeah, awesome. I mean, what? I wouldn't do that, right? right? Uh, Kari Schneider is here from Empower <laughs> Conditioning, uh, my trainer, and a trainer to some really top national athletes. My goodness, this is amazing. I mean, I've seen some of the athletes that you've had uh, at Empower Conditioning, this guy being one of them. Hi, Connor. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Can I just say, this guy can push a sled like it's nobody's business. Yeah, I can ride a sled. I guarantee you, he can beat <laughs> you. Uh, so w what does it take to, to be a, uh, a, an elite national athlete like Connor here? Uh, it takes a lot of work, and it's especially tough for Canadian athletes because they don't get a lot of funding, so Connor's in that same boat. And uh, so he's going to school. He's with the national rugby team. And he's training and trying to do all of that, but still play with Team Canada. So, you know, it's uh, he. It's not like he's getting a bunch of money to do this or anything. So it's it's like a lot of national team athletes just trying to scrape by. But as you realize too, to be performing at that high level, it takes a lot of training and takes a lot of dedication. So it's pretty tough. It's it's not an easy thing to do. And and he's a great example of trying to put all the work in and still do an engineering degree. It's pretty so. tough, but at the same time, Connor, she's pretty tough as well, eh? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's been one of the tougher workout regiments I've ever done in my life. So tell us about training with Kari and how how your your program has evolved. Uh. I guess just when I'd be working out with myself, it'd be more uh, just kind of get in the gym, do whatever, uh, just pretty much lift whatever weights I can. But Kari's more focused on uh, like the functional movements and that, which is uh, a huge part of all sports. So uh, more mobile, uh, able to move better and just better awareness of uh, my body. So is it then easier to target specific aspects of your of your work workout with Kari like I mean what kinds of things do you need to specifically work on as a rugby player uh, well just I'd get it injured a lot so we, we worked <laughs> a lot on the uh, <laughs> um, yeah we worked a lot on the mobility just getting flexible in that and then also um, I don't really have an off season so I kind of be need to be at top top level all the time so uh, power always has to be up, uh, endurance, cardio. Uh, so it's tough couple things to balance out. Now I've seen you put them to, you know, the grinds, I guess, at, at the gym. You don't, you know, there's, there's sort of no holding back really with a, a national athlete versus somebody else or? Well, you got to be careful because if uh, I'm going to get in big trouble per se from Team Canada Rugby if I hurt him, right? But at the same time, I also need to have him performing well. And he's going to head back to the national team program. And he's got to be lifting what they expect him to lift, be as fast as they're going to test him. They're going to do a long jump. They're going to do cardio tests. They're going to do speed tests, lifting tests. And he needs to be performing where they expect him to be performing if they're having someone like me work with him. So you know the pressure is on. But at the same time, you know I know that my product, I'm going to make sure that he's powerful, he's fast, he's improving in his strength, and right now able to do some of the things that, you know, weren't able to do because we're tapping into some of the harder parts like the flexibility. Well, and as we take a look at, uh, at Connor playing some rugby here, it's, you got to train, basically you've got to train him to be tough. You got to train <laughs> him, you got to train this guy to put up with some serious punishment, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if you see all oh my <laughs> word every possible movement pattern you get every possible this is you guys last summer playing Russia uh, yeah this is the, at the Churchill Cup in England playing uh, Russia this was my first game for Canada oh oh you my know what word. It, it just how, how do you train somebody to take a knee to the head or <laughs> you know to, to to get stepped on Kari <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I just verbally abuse him throughout <laughs> the whole so you know take his mind off the <laughs> is that you there where are uh, you yeah number 13 Running Here right now with, with the ball. Yeah. And Look at you. the big dive. Wow. Coming. Oh. Amazing. Good for you. 
Good for you. Oh, there is that you again? Oh, so, there yep. he is. There he goes again. Run, 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 run. <laughs> run. Ah! I'm pretty sure he knows oh. how this turns out. So <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of anticlimactic for, uh, for Connor. Yeah. So but he, yeah, he plays 15s and he plays 7s. So, and 7s rugby is, is going to be in the next 2016 Olymp Summer Olympics. So that's you know pretty exciting for for rugby and pretty exciting for for him as well because yeah. he he plays both and so yeah it's 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 a lot of he has to be very versatile as an athlete and very explosive very powerful and uh, yeah has his work cut out for him as you can see there. You have uh, trained a lot of national athletes, Kari. Has mm -hmm. there ever been a situation where? Even a national athlete isn't holding up to their end of the dedication to the program. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sort of fired anybody? Can you do that? Can you fire, <laughs> Can you fire a client? Somebody? I've kicked people out of the gym for not performing the way I expect them to. If it's a team situation, then if they're slacking or they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then they affect everybody else on the team who's training at the same time. And I, because we need to keep a level of intensity, I won't tolerate that. So then they, out they go. They usually, they usually want to be with a team badly enough that they're going to do what they're supposed to do. So, and uh, this guy, he's got plenty of dedication and plenty, plenty of desire to, to push hard. So he's, he's not going to have that problem. I, w I would think by the time <laughs> you get to that level, dedication's probably not much of an no. issue. But a as you mentioned it earlier, that you don't have an off season. So I'm guessing uh, a significant part of your training is just to stay injury free, just to, just to keep out of, uh, keep on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it didn't used to be, and I used to get a lot of injuries. Um, but yeah, now I've become a lot more injury free and definitely it allows me to uh, continue playing. Well, specifically, yeah. what kind of injuries are we talking about? Uh, well, I guess there's like the, the broken legs and separated shoulders and that, that you can't really um, like train for, but I'd get a lot of ham, hamstring injuries. Wow. Uh, and those are gone now. Uh, I understand hmm. you're heading to New Zealand. Uh, I am this this afternoon. This afternoon. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for stopping <laughs> by. This is, this is preparation <laughs> for jet lag right here. Right? Exactly. Nice job. Uh, so, what have you done to prepare for? And I'm glad you mentioned jet lag. I mean, that in itself can take a toll on the body. So, does that kind of come into play with the training that you um, do with these guys? I haven't really done too much with them, but typically what we do is. Uh, Usually there's a lot of planning in terms of when the, uh, when the team arrives to a destination, what they're doing as soon as they get there. So usually to deal with jet lag when they first get there, there's three things that help the most, and that's sunlight, getting some activity in, and <laughs> conversation. So those three things kind of start to help you, and you usually want to give a certain number of days based on how many hours you, uh, you're jet lagged. So you know his team though is there they leave in the next couple days so and then they have they have several days there before they actually compete like i don't think they compete till next yeah, so a week and a time. half so they they'll they'll be there for almost 6 days before they compete Wow. Well, uh, the sunlight shouldn't be a problem. It's beautiful summer <laughs> in yeah. New Zealand. And uh, the activity, I think, you probably should yeah. be able to and find some things up. to do. Absolutely. And with the whole team razzing him, I'm sure the conversation's <laughs> there, too. So. How crazy is your life being a student trying to train as well? I mean, it, your training is pretty intense. So how, how do you incorporate all that and still not sort of be steered off down the student path of the, the <laughs> craziness that can happen? Uh, yeah, I definitely waver sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think last term was definitely the craziest. I showed up to school uh, in the start of November, so I, I missed the first two months. Wow. Um, and then I was trying to train at a high level still and also pass all my exams. Um, you can't do it all. Yeah. <laughs> it's so. impossible. Well, it does. Yeah. It sounds like your keyword here is sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice you have to make, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's um, a smart cookie, though. So. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I figured out like what I want to do, and uh, so just going and doing it. What's the ultimate goal for your career? Uh, hopefully continue to play for both national teams, 7s and 15s, uh, Olympics, and professional as well. Amazing. What are you taking in school? Uh, engineering. Engineering. Yeah. So. It's a smart cookie, too. <laughs> <laughs> does don't, that ever, does, that, does that come into play when when you're playing rugby? You know, your uh, I guess your so. <laughs> <couple, laughs> <couple laughs> yeah. engineering yeah. mind <laughs> looks at the field and, and figures stuff out. Uh, yeah, I guess you got to be logical in the field. So talent only takes you so far. Then it's being smart, yeah. having the desire, having the commitment. So he's got he's got all that going on. I think it's important to mention, Kari, that Connor isn't the only uh, Team Canada national athlete that you are training. Who else are you training right now? 
Uh, Mallory Deleuze, she's, uh, she's one of the senior carded athletes for Hockey Canada. Um, I do some work with Rowing Canada as well. Uh, so yeah, there's a few that trickle in and out, so it's good. And you also trained wow. your husband. Yeah, he's, he's uh, trained him for over 10 years. Do so you ever fire him? <laughs> no, he's one of the Not hardest yet. working athletes ever. So. Thank you so much to both of you. EmpowerConditioning.com for more information on training with Kari. Let's check out our pet of the day.